She was preempting getting fired by saying she quit yesterday. Today, the Beverly Hills reunion is missing a housewife, and former Real Housewife Kelly Ben Simone is here to break it all down. I'm not asking you to trust me. I'm not asking trusted. anything of you. Plus, reality all-star Aubrey O'Day drops by to tell us all about that first date interrupted on last night's X on the Beach. This is very labor-intensive. Dating is hard. This is your reality check. Who created this? I have questions for them. Welcome, everybody. It is Wednesday, and what a Wednesday it is. Big show for us lined up today. I am Lindsay Rodriguez. Welcome to Reality Check. We have got so much going on, and joining me for all of the fun is former Real Housewife, the very gorgeous Kelly Ben Simone. Welcome, Kelly. Hi, Lindsay. How are you? I am doing great. So glad that you could join us today. Cause so there's, happy. There's a lot to talk about. We're on there? our own couch today. We are exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you're wearing Zimmerman. I am, in the spirit of all my Aussies. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. So <laughs> I'm excited to talk about the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills reunion, but before Can't we get wait. into that, we have to start with our top five. You with me? Love. All right, let's do it. Top five. So at number five, Gretchen Rossi says uh, haters can suck it. The Real Housewives of Orange County alum took to Instagram to clap back against the critics who have been chastising her for not sharing a photo of her newborn daughter, Skylar Gray, after she gave birth last week. In an Insta story, she says, let's be clear, I don't owe any of you anything. She continued to explain that she has a lot to learn as a new mom and is still recovering from her cesarean section and then urged critics to unfollow her if they had a problem with her decision and thank the followers who sh showered her with support. Now, Kelly, what do you make of all of this? Like, as a celebrity, is it right for people to expect for you to just share every single thing that happens in your life, particularly when it comes to personal stuff like children? I mean, I think some people have different, you know, frame of references. Like, some people just love to bear it all and show it all and are just, you know, they want to be, like, transparent. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, it is social media, and I think that it's always important to, like, keep your fan base in mind and you should share the information that you think that they should be privy to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't want to hear all your dirty laundry. Right, you know what right, I mean? right. And I think the thing is, too, is like we've seen that like the more you complain, the more people like you. But there's also that other, you know, layer of, you know, of fans and, and people that are kind of like me that I'm more like, let's celebrate, let's give solutions. Mm -hmm. So I believe I'm happy with Gretchen. And you know what? Some people just suck. Yeah. I mean, like to, to <laughs> say to a new mom, oh, boo, that like, you didn't share your, your photos of your kid. And Fine. especially uh -huh. with with birth of, you know, children. I mean, there's just a lot that goes along with that, you know, yeah. hormones and just, there's just a lot. So some people want to care about it and some people just don't. Yeah, there's also that like, oh my God, what have I done? I've created this human and now I have to make sure it survives. I like, know, and I can't imagine. feeling so great because your body is like looking like some other body. Right. And you know, it's just, yeah. So I, I like her. I think she's great. I like her too. Yeah. I'm sorry that she had to go through Aww, that. Oh, Gretchen. We love you. Love you, like Gretchen. <laughs> At number four, Nikki Bella and her boo Artem have made their relationship official after four months of dating without labels. Nikki revealed on the Bella's podcast, we are boyfriend and girlfriend. The two met on Dancing with the Stars in 2017 and have been dating since March. So Kelly, what's your take? Do you like labels in relationship or just sort of go with the flow? I mean, I think that we've seen so much of labels of like th these like kind of ambiguous labels of like, I know him, he's my friend, and there's all the, you know, there's so much dating online, so yeah. people are trying to keep it like really low key. Yeah. And so I admire the Bellas. First of all, I'm a twin, so I love the Bellas, love you Bellas. But I also admire that she is going, coming out and saying like, I have a boyfriend, this is who he is. I mean, I have, when I, in my dating career, I've always kept you know, all the guys that I've dated very secretive because I obviously have two kids and I just don't feel that's appropriate. Yeah. But for, you know, if when you have someone like Bella's, when she's like, I'm ready to have a boyfriend and take it to the next level. I love that she is, you know, saying, he, you know, that she has a boyfriend. I know, it's adorable. Yeah. I'm really happy for but that. when you have kids, I think you should kind of keep your Agreed. dating life. Yeah, too. until it's super serious, because yeah. that impacts them, obviously. Right, it's like, hi, my mom is with another guy. Like, you don't want that. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can see that. At number three, tensions are high in the Lone Star State. The dames of Dallas are back and stirring <laughs> up a new pot of drama for season four of Real Housewives of Dallas. So Leanne, Brandy, Stephanie, Cameron, and Deandra are all all back for the new season and will be joined by a new housewife, Carrie Brittingham. The feud between Leanne and Deandra continues to spill over into the new season, even though the two vowed to work
work toward repairing their friendship at the end of season three. So make sure you check out people.com for an exclusive first look at the trailer for the upcoming season, which premieres in September. Kelly, are you excited for the new season of Dallas? Love Texas, love Dallas. Okay. Like over the top. My best women are from California, New York, and obviously Dallas. Love. And Australia. And Australia! <laughs> and Australia. <laughs> All right, at number two, Ashley Workus of Bravo's Summer House has opened up about a recent skin cancer diagnosis amid new motherhood. Yesterday, Ashley posted a cute candid with her newborn son, Dean Hudson, with a rather long and revealing caption. She began, this is me on Friday, resting after having a surgery to remove the skin cancer, malignant melanoma, on my back. She went on to detail what she's been going through postpartum as well as a skin cancer scare, and she ended the post with this. I am sharing to urge everyone to get your skin checked. Most annual visits are covered by insurance, and I now will be going multiple times a year to stay safe. So being a public figure requires you to be many, many things and to wear yeah. many hats. Oftentimes you're it's you're sort of responsible for these PSAs. Like how do you draw the line or find the balance for yourself as to being, you know, like giving out good public messages and also just keeping some things to yourself? I mean, I actually did that on Instagram last week, just talking about being like a female provider, you know, being, you know, the mom and the dad and the family of two girls. And I think that sometimes it's really, really great because it allows all the, the, the fan base to see that, you know, we're all going through things in a different way. And, you know, we, and a lot of us have solutions or have, you know, gone through some really, really bad things to get us to where we are today. So I love when people are posting things that are proactive mm -hmm. and helpful to other people. I love that. And I'm so sorry that she has skin cancer. Yeah. There's just so many new products that are, you know, clean beauty is such a huge, huge market. Definitely. And there is so many ways of really taking care of your skin. Yeah, absolutely. Well, best of luck, Ashley. And as she said, everyone, please go and get annual checks. Yes. Because uh, not, nothing is more important than your health, let's face it. And at number one, things are really getting heated behind the scenes of Bachelor Nation. In a statement to people.com, Warner Brothers has acknowledged that they are looking into the abuse allegation leveled against the Bachelor franchise's creator, Mike Fleiss, by his estranged wife, Laura Fleiss. Laura was granted an emergency restraining order yesterday as she alleged Mike had been verbally and physically abusive to her and submitted photos of injuries and bruises she had sustained, as well as footage of an altercation between the two of them caught on security cameras. Now, Mike, who recently filed for divorce, responded with his own declaration in which he denied Laura's claims and requested primary custody of their four-year-old son, Ben. So this is really alarming news, and People.com will continue to follow the story as the facts unfolds. But with this controversy coming to light, how do you think it will affect the popularity of the show? Well, it seems like B Bachelor Nation is starting to crumble, which is bad news because I'm a huge fan of Bachelor, the whole Bachelor, Bachelorette. I love those Bachelor. The Bachelor oh, yeah, yeah, I love it. Love it so much. Yeah. And it's just the whole, you know, storyline is based on finding love. So to hear that the producer is um, not successful in that is terrible but you know everyone has their own story and we just wish the two of them you know happiness and wellness and to find love in whatever you know situation they absolutely. have absolutely and people will be following the story as it continues continues to unfold so hopefully there'll be more information uh, and we'll have it as it comes to light so yeah. kelly and i are going to dig in real deep into that real housewives of beverly hills reunion after the break but first i have to ask do you wish that you were on real housewives of beverly hills instead of new york i totally do first of all they are like my shoe twins they all have <laughs> the most over the top shoes they wear incredible clothes their homes are unbelievable i mean if i can be a real estate agent like uh, kyle Richard's husband, I am like right there. Okay, well, you know, I mean, there's an opening. I'm just saying, <laughs> LVP, she's gone, so maybe <laughs> Kelly Ben Simone, you real housewives of Beverly Hills, you never know. Uh, well, uh, we really do have a big show today. Later in the show, we'll be chatting with reality superstar Aubrey O'Day from MTV's X on the Beach. Be sure to tweet us all your questions for Aubrey to at people using the hashtag realitycheck. Right now, we will take a very quick break, but when we return, it's all about that reunion, so Woo! stay tuned. Wow, it wasn't actually your conscience and thought, I don't want to do this to Dorit. It was, I don't want to be the only one to do this to Dorit.
Welcome back to the show. Kelly Ben Simone is still hanging out with me. Thank you so much for being here, lovely. Hi. Looking fabulous as always. Thank you. <laughs> uh, which is why you should be on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, actually, because, yeah, those ladies, Thank they you. bring the they fashion. They dress, love. Yes, and oh last night God. was no exception. The ladies were looking juicy, and, of course, the drama was <laughs> just as juicy. So Lisa Vanderpump, of course, did not attend the reunion. At the top of the show, Andy revealed that he had heard Lisa told a reporter that she had decided to quit the show, and the ladies, well, they had had some thoughts watch I think she gave that interview yesterday so that she could say she quit because she knew that if she didn't show up here today that you would probably do the same thing that you had to do with Adrian and fire her so she was preempting getting fired by saying she quit yesterday so Kelly oh. what's your opinion on this do you think that Lisa quit to avoid being fired do you think she was ever in danger of being fired. What is your what is your opinion? I love Lisa Vanderpump, and I love that she's actually taken it to another level, and she has Vanderpump Rules, which is another one of my favorite shows, we by do. the way. Yeah. Um, so I really admire her. I think she's super smart, and she dropped the mic. She was like, guys, you're great on the couch. Enjoy yourself. I'm going to be watching you from my couch. Right. And um, the whole idea of fire is that those are very ambiguous for letters together. Mm. I mean, you know, fire... To if fire in the real world and fire in reality is a totally different thing. Yeah. But I think she's amazing, and I think the girls are kind of like I can think that they're what they're trying to say is, hey, I wish you would could have sat with us so we could have kind of hashed it out, and then you know you could have left and we could have like you know tied a bow on that. Right, I think kind it was of more closure. like that. Yeah, like with any end of any relationship. Yeah, not probably. just like see ya, but yeah, well, she did drop the mic, which yeah. is kind of you know very like superstar love. Right. Yeah. Well, she's a superstar. She's a queen. But with Lisa gone, who will be the new Queen Bee. Can Kyle carry the way of the crown? Let's have a look at that. No, I, I the Queen thing makes me laugh, but that's sweet thing. But it's true. Look who showed up. So I agree. Is. She's one of the original. She's the I last agree, but not original only is cast she the original, member. she's the leader of the group. She is the leader. How is she the leader of the because group? Because she is the one that we are all connected to. Well, I'll tell you what, was one fan was not on board with the passing of the crown tweeting this. Sorry, Erica, you don't choose the queen and the crown isn't inherited. The fans crown the queen and this crown left with the queen. So oh, Kelly, right? my God. I, are off. I love these fans <laughs> so much. I know, they're very passionate. Oh, my God, on Twitter, you have to follow. There's, like, an actual fan site that, that you can join and yeah. they just go crazy. And sometimes, like, some of the housewives will go in and, in, in and out because it's really interesting to hear what the fans have to say. Yeah. Um, do I think that the queen is, you know, if there's a new queen? The fans really decide that. I mean, mm -hmm. we can sit there and say like, oh, you know, I know you and you from her, from you, but it's really the fans decide like who is, like in Mean Girls, they decide like who's the who's going to be the one that's going to really yeah. make the decision. Who's going to be the Regina George? Exactly. <laughs> who would be the Regina right? George? Well, who would you who would you give the crown to, in your opinion? Uh, you know these ladies. I don't know. I, I'm a big fan of Lisa Renna, and mm -hmm. I just love the way she dances. She's got a really good spirit, a really good mindset, and I feel like she is a good queen just because she's an amazing diplomat. Right. And But she's also very discerning, very honest. She's a good businesswoman outside of the show, so she's like, the transparency of on and off camera is really good, and I yeah. think that that shows like a good queen. Yeah, and also her name's already Lisa, so it just makes it easier for us, doesn't it? Lisa Lisa. Yeah. Lisa Lisa. Yeah. I mean, what do you think that Real Housewives of Beverly Hills even looks like without LBP? Do you think the show will be the same? Do you think it will be better, worse? I mean, I think that Lisa Vanderpump added, like, an element of sophistication to the show. Not that the girls aren't great, but, I mean, I love Lisa Vanderpump. She's a very, you know, elegant woman. I remember meeting her a long time ago, and she and her husband are just very charming, very engaging. Um, they didn't really care. They were just, like, happy to meet new people, and they were just, you know, they just had that English vibe to them. They're yeah. just like, hi, who are you? We don't know you. Let's get to know you. Uh, and I really, really like that about them. So, you know. I guess we'll just have to wait and I see, know. right? Well, look, this whole thing obviously started with what has become known as Puppygate, where a little pup named Lucy Lucy Applejuice was adopted by Dorit, then given to a shelter, and you know the rest. So here's a tidbit of Teddy explaining how she got involved in the whole mess before taping. Watch. I had never gone to dinner with him or drinks or done anything outside of a Vanderpump event. But then but that I, makes it all the more weird to me that you never spoke to Lisa Because it about was, it. that's my point. I didn't think twice about it because 
her head guy is saying, I'm talking to her right now trying to figure this out. So one viewer shared this opinion on Twitter, writing, Teddy's story has more holes than Swiss cheese. <laughs> and a cute little graphic there. So what do you make of all of this? Is Teddy just sort of, you know, is she being accountable or is she just sort of trying to throw as many excuses at the wall to see which one sticks? Well, all these dogs that are in shelters are have chips, so we kind of know where they come from. Mm. Um, you know, Puppy Gate, love that. <laughs> 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 Uh, but at the same time that, that, you know, it's all fun and games, Puppy Gate's a really cute name and, you know, whatever they say that, you know, it's holes or not, I mean, an, 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 a dog that's in an animal shelter, they need homes. Yeah. I mean, that is like, that, that's, that's the conversation. It doesn't matter who did it or who didn't, dogs do not deserve to be in kill shelters, they don't deserve to be in shelters, they, there's plenty of people that will take dogs, so if you know of anyone that wants an animal, you know, please direct them immediately, you know, we have in New York, we have Animal Haven right yeah. around the corner from me, I mean, we have so many opportunities to save and help these animals, and to, you know, not be proactive about it is a disservice. I think you make a really good point, because in the drama of the ladies fighting, I think that very solid point was completely missed, so thank you for bringing that to life. Sure. Very well said. Yeah. Well, the ladies never seem to keep mum about finances and divorces, and last night's reunion was no different. Watch this. Do you think she should have asked for half? I don't know. Charlie Sheen came up when she was with him. She Charlie was... was almost bankrupt before we got married. Got it. Okay, well, I don't know much about... I'm sorry I didn't follow you that much. All I know, I can only speak about myself. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> I mean, there was clearly already some tension there, and then I feel like Andy was sort of trying to stir the pot a little bit. So in the season, when Denise said, you know, I didn't go after half of Charlie Sheen's money because I'm not a greedy effing whore, right. do you think that was directed at Camille, or was it just a generalisation about the way that some women are with rich husbands? Well, first of all, I don't. The law in California is not, is it? It's not fifty fifty. I don't think it's fifty fifty. Oh, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't it think very state to state, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does vary from state to state. So that I don't know the law there, so I can't speak to that. But um, you know, first, you know, Denise Richards has been through enough as it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how much money she has from him, it really is irrelevant. Uh, you know, she's protecting her girls and trying to create you know a nice family environment. And I just feel like people that have issues, you just need to like let that be yeah. and you know sometimes when the housewives and they get a little ferocious with you know situations that are not appropriate I just feel like they need to like dial it back yeah and that's a situation and then the other thing is like I don't follow you I mean these women are hilarious Shade. they want like they want like literally like a CV before it's just like this is not you know <laughs> I'm not hiring you for a C position and right, they're right. like you did not know who I was it's like <laughs> no I did not sorry emotions but, run high yeah high so high oh, yeah exactly well, high what, tides high tides I am high just from hanging yes. out with you this so has been such a fun. great experience so thank you so much for being on the couch with me today oh my and God. for sharing your opinions and insight into this very fun and fabulous franchise good luck Beverly Hills I love you Bye. Uh, hide this lady to be on Beverly Hills, please. I will watch that very much. Kelly Ben Simone, you are a delight. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank we you. are going to take a very quick break, but when we come back, we'll have Aubrey O'Day on the line from LA to chat all about MTV's X on the Beach, so make sure you stay tuned. All of a sudden, some girl comes in with her d out, and it wasn't the waitress, it was his ex Elena. Could have fooled me. Welcome back to the show. It is just getting even better because we're so excited to have the one and only Aubrey O'Day on the line right now from LA. So Aubrey, hello, how are you? Hi, how are you? Fantastic, so glad that you could join us today because we're really excited to talk about the premiere of X on the Beach. Yes, it was a good one. I know, I know. So this season is actually unlike past seasons because this time you all knew that your exes were going to be washing up on the beach. So why did you decide to sign up this time? You know, I think it's always good when you're moving forward and you want to find love to make sure that you've dealt with everything in your past. So I do like the way that the show is formatted and I'm not scared of any of my exes. I have plenty of receipts on them, so we're good. <laughs> I love that. You gotta have the receipts. Well, at the first gotta crush... Gotta have them nowadays. <laughs> yes. At the first crush ceremony, you were immediately drawn to form a Big Brother cast member, Mark Jansen. So I want to know, what was it about Mark that made you feel the spark? That was really cute. Thank um, you. <laughs> Mark, 
<laughs> Mark has a great smile. And um, I don't know, like there was so much going on and there were so many options. And every time I looked around, there was just Mark in front of me with this huge teddy bear smile. Yeah. And I really am looking to be with a kind man. Definitely. Kind, a kind person is in my top five. Yeah. Now, yeah. in my ripe old age of 35. I so think that's good. I'm, I want, I'm, it's important to be around kind people. And I saw like, just this big teddy bear smile and it stood out to me most. Love that. And the muscles didn't hurt either, let's be real. <laughs> you know what's funny? I've never dated a guy with tons of muscles. Yeah. That usually doesn't attract me, but right. yeah, I mean, it, he definitely has got a lot of muscles. Mm -hmm. Well, he also has a lot of X. Uh, so Elena crushed your date, making for a very a awkward threesome, threesome, and you went from being served drinks to being served an X. So let's see how that played out. It wasn't the waitress, it was his ex Elena. I didn't realize you drink. Well, it's a special occasion. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> Do you not usually drink? Not really. He's not a big fan I'm... of fun. Wow. Oh my God, he's been so fun with me. I mean, Aubrey, Elena obviously wants Mark back, so are you gonna give them a shot to work it out? Or are you claiming her ex as your next? You know, I'm never gonna claim a man that is still has, you know, ties that are unloose from his past. So I, I definitely, like, it was an awkward moment for sure because Elena was, she's a very intense girl and she chugged an entire bottle of liquor in front of me, which was scary and also very impressive. Um, <laughs> and Mark seemed to be like, I don't know, confused and uh, like he was pouring sweat everywhere. Like you couldn't see it, but he was literally like almost wet. Oh, wow. And I felt like, should I leave? Should I help be a therapist and talk him through this moment a bit? Well, like, you what said you that, yeah, you felt like a counselor. Yeah, I, I really did because I didn't know Mark enough yet to like take up for him and like, I want to be with this man. And I felt bad that, you know, clearly the girl chugged a bottle of liquor in front of me like she she was going through something mm -hmm. so I wanted to make sure that like they were okay and then give them their space yeah well I think that's the right thing to do and then also on the episode you mentioned that a certain someone who is your ex is also your soulmate do you have anything to elaborate on where that's concerned you know I I believe that you have more than one soulmate in life I have many soulmates you know I've found them in best friends. I found them in my group, Danity Kane. Um, I think they're people that you meet at certain times or periods of your life where you connect as one and you experience life as one. And it's a soul tie. And I have, both Dawn and I had one with each other. And hopefully I will continue in life to find another that was that impactful. Oh, of course you will. And you know what they say, people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. So I feel that there are plenty yep. more soulmates coming Are you coming a lifetime? Because we already know each other. That's so we true. Might be, we might have some here. Maybe you're my soulmate. Finally, I found her. <laughs> We're soulmates, we can be TV soulmates. Yay, <laughs> I love that, it's a deal. Well look, earlier in our show, we asked our viewers to tweet us some questions for you. So why don't we answer some of your fans? Mel, you ready? Let's do it. Okay. Well, at DKAU Stacy asks, would you want to work with Diddy again on making the band? And before you answer, I would love. Oh, I was gonna say. Actually, I would love. Oh yeah, no, I'll answer anything, girl. Oh. <laughs> um, I would love to see Danity Kane back on a series that partners along with their new Making the Band franchise. Um, I would love to see Danity came back with Day 26 and Donnie Kling. I'd like the old family back because we have blood and we have a lot that we've been through. And I think our story of how we became family and how we've stayed family beyond what everyone saw happen on Making the Band is a very interesting story. And yeah. there's a lot of dynamics and pain and love and people still fighting to have relevance in the music industry and and um you know none of us have fully been reunited with puff who in that situation and setting would be like a father because yeah. we were a family yeah 
Um, so I think that we need to have that show before making the band. I will, comes I, back. Yeah, and you actually commented on Diddy's Instagram post when he announced the reboot, saying you had making the band because of us. Bring the true stars back and show you can finish what you started. So has Diddy reached out to you about the reboot? Because I know there'd be an audience for it. You know, Diddy's not going to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, who knows? If he, he would. All, he would. Re he would respond to that in all like bleeps. <laughs> He's not going to let a woman talk to him like that. <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, look, Aubrey, it was so good to catch up with you again after all these years. You're looking as beautiful as ever and so glad that you're finding all the success. You, and I wish you all the luck in the world finding love as well because you deserve it. Thank you. You too, babe. Thank good you. seeing you again. You look beautiful. Thanks, darling. Everyone, remember, X on the Beach airs Tuesdays at 9 p.m. on MTV, so make sure you don't miss it. Right now, it's time for one last break, but we're coming back with another great history moment from reality TV. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. Now, before we get into our history moment, we do need to give a huge congratulations to the one and only RuPaul, who has received a staggering 14 Emmy nominations for the Drag Race franchise. Congratulations. So well deserved. And now here is a gem from our reality history treasure chest. Enjoy. Here comes the car, guys. All right. In this 2013 episode of Catfish, Artis is about to meet Jess in person for the very first time. Uh-oh. Despite currently living with his girlfriend and three children, Artis is ready to blow it all up for someone he believes is a beautiful blonde woman. But it turns out Jess is really some dude named Justin. Are you Jess? Yeah, I'm Jess. You're Jess. Yeah. A catfisher determined to expose online cheaters. I started seeing guys like him who are already in a relationship. So I was like, you know what, I kind of have this power to use it for something, use it for good. Justin's unsettling slow clap is one of the greatest moments in reality history. And although we're not so sure Artis agrees with us, he did learn an important lesson. I learned my lesson, man. Well, really teach me to leave the internet alone. For me for right now, I ain't telling nobody else to leave it alone. That dude is like a dating vigilante, my goodness. Wow. Anyway, remember, you can now catch Reality Check on Twitter every day at 4.30 p.m. Eastern just by following at People. What a great show we had today. Thank you to all of my guests, Kelly Ben-Simone and Aubrey O'Day, for joining me. I am Lindsay Rodriguez, and I will check you tomorrow.